Hello from the dung heap, everybody. <laughs> These are my friends. <laughs> a lot of Hi, them. friends. <laughs> There he is. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, everybody. And we live. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello 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 everyone hello marilyn hi there well I don't think you need any introduction, but this is the fabulous and feral Cheryl. <laughs> and <laughs> feral you. Cheryl is uh, going to teach us some proper British etiquette today. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I just want to get to know you. I mean, we've talked back and forth so much and I've seen you, you know, running around uh, Clearwater on the loose. And I just, I just love you already. So it's so, so great to be able <laughs> to you. actually have a conversation with you. So, well, and first, Marilyn, I want to thank you for for giving me a space, not just everyone else in this chat, because I know we all agree. Thank you for giving us a space where we can uh, where we can come and feel safe, where we can come and get um, good news, <laughs> even some rough news some days, but with um, a, a loving, gentle, empathetic twist. Thank you so so much. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Cheryl, and everyone who supports me, just even emotionally. Um, I feel like I feel safe here. <laughs> I really I do. <laughs> and I didn't think I, I don't know. I, I really didn't know what to expect. This whole, this whole experience, experiment, space, whatever community. <laughs> but uh, it, as you know, we, you know, we talk about all the things, right? And uh, I get nervous every time I come on. So when you said you were nervous this morning, so like I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> it's okay. We're we're all friends here. We're all friends it's, here. So that's uh, true. We are. We are. We're yeah. a really loving, good community. Oh, hi, Chad. Sorry, hi, Chad. Um, oh yeah, let's. Uh, let's I say hello him. To people. I met Chad. <laughs> uh, we got Mama's life here. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. Mama. <laughs> love Mama. I love Mama. Mama <laughs> is on it. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I love right. the way he did that Southern darling. He called me darling. Hey, darling. I just Aww. loved it. I love that. And we got Clearwater Chado. I, I call him Chado. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it says Chado, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Kari, I, think, I think you say Karini. It's from, she's from Brazil. So I'm pretty sure it's oh, Karini. Okay, and Karini. Karini's coming out with her biscuits and her pants on fire. You know, yes. not her pants on fire. We're, we've been talking about some people who aren't too truthful lately, you know. And mm -hmm. so uh, someone asked for a new emoji with pants on fire. Uh, liar, liar, <laughs> pants on fire. That's great. <laughs> I love the emojis. Isn't there a new Rodney? There is a, there is a Raven. Uh, he's over there. But yes, there's a new Rodney. It's uh, Rodney's husband. Uh, he's he's rainbow colored and his name is Raymond. So, yeah. <laughs> Rodney and Raymond, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, bring out the Raymonds and the Rodneys if anyone wants to hit the That's emoji. That's wonderful. Yeah, there's a Marlene Sweeney and there's a Jezebel. <laughs> oh, there is? There's a Jezebel. Well, Marlene always talked about this Jezebel spirit that supposedly yeah. my seven my seven year old had and I had because she must have it must be contagious, you know. And I did the painted eyes because she always talked about the oh that's what it is. Okay, it's okay. Square. Yeah, it's a square, and just I framed the you know with the hair, the painted eyes. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah. We'll and Marlene so. Marlene Sweeney looks I always said she she reminds me of Keith Ranieri. <laughs> oh like really? That. Oh, good yeah. lord! Yeah. So, I mean, that's well, that's unpleasant. 
<laughs> not to pick up on anyone's looks, but yeah, she just had those that's that those eyes and the Coke bottle glasses and yeah. Oh yeah, no, yep. not making fun of anyone, but that's unpleasant. He's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like with little baby space navy, big space navy, little baby Davy. Yeah, we got one of those. We got one of those. All right, we've got uh CEO Belf Unstable Data. <laughs> yes. Hi, everybody. From a poet. Uh, all our friends are here. Hey, Brian. Who you got? John Van Geest. And we got mods. All right. <laughs> I love Lucinda it. Lucinda Ray Cupboard reporting for duty. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Did you did you see in the thumbnail? I had to cover. Your, I tried to cover your cans with <laughs> with Marmite and spotted dick. Put, okay, how do we say that? Spotted dick pudding. Spotted pudding? dick puddings. It's pud. I love that you pud. gave it like the Norwegian accent. You gave it a pud, <laughs> but it's just pud. We call it a pud. A pud. Okay. Spotted dick, good old pud for dessert. But I'll, sh I'll, I'll we'll talk more about that in a minute. Oh yes, yes. We've it. got a show and tell, and we've got all all kinds of things. Wow, someone Rhonda's coming out with all the emojis. Oh, she's vibing today. That's right. <laughs> and Joel McCoy comment: the new foundation has really brought joy to the community. It is needed. Great to see everybody behind it. I know. I know all the, the new board members. And while I'm at it, I, I think we need to set the record straight on something, though. Really. Uh, I'm going to pop this up here. One of the board members didn't get their name uh, on the website. So uh, the, the new board members also includes uh, Gertrude Quibelt, Reese Quibelt, new board members. There we go. We'll be having a little chat with Erin a bit later, or she will. <laughs> She'll probably tell me. Where's my picture? <laughs> That's right. Hello, Hello, me old China. Hello, George. Sorry. <laughs> Give Hello. George a British welcome, as he George gave me. George our pilot. That's right. <laughs> Next time we do this, I didn't want to complicate things, but I'll give I'll give you the clicker so you can pop on, pop things up. Because I'm probably oh, on a different. Can I? Screen. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't have I don't have you set up for that this time. But next, time, I wanted to make it just simple so you can yeah. push the blue button. Because <laughs> the I'm other way way is, is, is I'm too scared to touch anything right now. So <laughs> okay. Hey, but first coffee, Susie. Oh, love her. Yes, and she just hit 500 subs this morning. Well, oh, I was excellent. Watching I was watching her live and uh, she's been talking about some amazing merch that she wants to design and I'm here for it. And I said, I told her you hit 500 subs and you can do fourth wall if she wants to do that. That's all you need is 500 subs for that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Someone needs to do it. That's adorable T-shirt. Come on. We, we need that. I need an adorable T-shirt. <laughs> yes, we can do that. We can hook you up with that. Mama's life. Someone said on my live yesterday about eating penguins. I thought they were serious until they said it was a chocolate. Oh, okay. Because George, that was that was the question that George asked me, told me to ask you. Because I was like, I have no idea about this penguin stuff. It sounds gross. No, we do eat penguins with tea. You got to have a cup of tea. You definitely and a mug. Not some poncy little cup. No, that's a poncy little cup. <laughs> it's very cute, Marilyn. Mug of tea, right? Mug. Oh, I was gonna no, do like they're these cookies are these chocolate. No, I'm sorry. No, I've got a lot of those. My mom's cups. They're really cute. Um, a penguin is a chocolate sandwich. It's two chalky biscuits with like this chocolate. You know, it's like a chocolate Oreo but long, oh. <laughs> and and covered in chocolate. And you now this is what I want to ask George. This is what I was going to ask Kelly. I don't remember because I've been in America a long time now. I don't remember dunking our penguins or our digestives. We dip them, right? We don't dunk. If if George could answer me that, because um, okay. we dip our penguins in our tea. So, yes, we do eat penguins. <laughs> we'll pick up a penguin, a lovely good penguin. When you feel a little peckish, pick up a penguin. <laughs> oh, this is someone on your channel, Sharon Serendipity, Senior Squirrel. Oh, really? Good morning. Hi, thank you for... You know my channel. Yes, and head over to uh is it at Feral Cheryl on the loose? That's yes. Her handle. And I did put 
a link to your channel in the description of the video. And I'm sure one of the fabulous mods would uh, happily put up your link. So go over and like and subscribe and even hang out there if you'd like. Yes, so. please thank you. Yes, yeah, see, I think we dip. I don't remember Duncan so much. That's an American thing, I think. So Joe just and then said the, the chocolate melts in your tea and it makes your tea chocolatey and it's really not oh it's so oh. good. Joe oh, just yeah. said the biscuit part of a penguin is the same as a bourbon. Yes, yeah. okay, so a bourbon. Basically, it's just a chalky biscuit, um, a long chalky biscuit with chocolate cream in it. That's a bourbon, oh. but a penguin is that. But covered in chocolate. See, in my neck of the woods, bourbon is uh gets you really, really drunk. Yeah, not now. No, for us it's <laughs> bourbon just is like a kind of whiskey. <laughs> well, yeah, see, in England, we don't drink whiskey, we don't drink bourbon, we drink whiskey. Oh, okay. There's bourbon both. is American. There's Tennessee, yeah. Yeah. Is it guys Tennessee bourbon or Kentucky bourbon? Is it Tennessee it's and Tennessee. Canadian, right? Canadians and Tennessee. Tennessee, Kentucky, Kentucky bourbon, isn't it Kentucky? Yeah, is it kind of is Tennessee or Kentucky, guys? Kentucky bourbon. That sounds more right. And yeah, it was one of those. Right. Okay. right. Yeah, I, no, I can't we, tell the difference, honestly. We drink whiskey, especially in my house. We drink whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> rich tea biscuits. Rich tea biscuits yeah. and rich tea biscuit is your basic boring. It's just a crispy round. They're so good though. There oh. is just a plain biscuit that you dip in your tea. And it breaks off sometimes, and now you've got mushy bits down at the bottom of your tea. The best okay. bit, though, is is a digestive with covered in chocolate. Once okay, again. so wait a minute. <laughs> Let me yeah. get something straight. So uh, he wrote suggestive digestives. That doesn't sound too appetizing. <laughs> I know. It sounds Since like something I left like... England, I realized that's not a great name for a cookie. Now, um, what's the other one they have for Oreo? Something ox, ox rocks. There was another cookie here that sounded like a cleaner to me. It was supposed to be like the copy of a, of an Oreo. It, anyway, sorry, never mind. Um, ox rocks. <laughs> digestives. They're made out of wheat. It's kind of like a bran cookie kind of a thing, you'd say. That's a digestive. Okay. And because it's brownish, it's wheat, it's a wheat cookie, you know, it's, it, it helps you with your digestion. But it does sound bloody awful now that, you know. Kind you of. It. Sounds medicinal. Doesn't Stay Spiria uh, is also from the UK. She's from the UK as well. Stay Spiria. A bourbon biscuit dipped in bourbon is freaking delicious. Just saying. Uh, hey, yum. you know what? I'll try it. Yeah. Try anything once. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, we got something to try. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. So should we should we do this? Should we start this? Uh, Let's start this. this Absolutely. <laughs> All right. This is so funny. Oh, now the first thing I do want to comment on. I'm glad you got a kettle finally. Mar oh my God, Marilyn! Because I was having kittens, as we say in England. I was having kittens. Oh, I, I just know. my tea. Was... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first time an American met, I'm like, oh, I was only here off the boat for a couple of weeks and I was at someone's house and I said, oh, you know, I could murder a cup of tea. And she goes, oh, I'll make you a cup of tea. So she went and got a poncy little cup, filled it halfway with water from the faucet, threw a tea bag in it cold and put it in the microwave. And I asked her, what on earth are you doing? And she said, I'm making you a cup of tea. And I said, get out. Oh, so then, <laughs> yes, right, and then I I my ways. <laughs> to teach her that you can never do that. Number one, it was apple cinnamon. I'm like, that's not tea. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm used to chewy tea. This is stuff oh. you chew. You know how Garfield likes his spoon to stand up in his coffee because he likes his coffee strong. <laughs> I'm Garfield, nope, but with tea. tea. Oh, really? And this is the stuff. This puts hair on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, I'm being a little bit because you know we were doing proper etiquette. So this is my this is oh. my teapot. I'm so afraid to use it. I don't use it very much, but I inherited this from oh, well, so my mother-in-law. It was Duncan's gr grandmother's great grandmother's grandmother's. Yes, it's a Limoges. Limoges. Oh, and, it's a Limoges. Uh, a Limoges. Yes. So that's why I'm so afraid to use it. I got my, one of my mums. It comes with a hat. 
British, of course. Ooh, I know, isn't that a pretty one? Gorgeous. Wow. It's yeah, really and pretty. I'm scared to use this one too. And it has a little creamer and the little milk thingy. Too with yeah, it. I was not going to bring those out too. But these I'm only come money. out when we have guests. And since we never have guests, because my dad's a Scientologist and hates people, no one ever comes to the house. So it's never <laughs> going to get touched. <laughs> All right, then. Well, this is some use for it. Okay. So we've had, we've had various, various controversies going on. So we settled. We settled the kettle thing. I yes. did heat. I did heat the water in the kettle, which only takes a few minutes, and I put it in here. I steeped. I put the, I put the um, Earl Grey that I have, the tea bags in first. Yes. And then added the water, and then it let it steep. It's good. Very very good. And I have a matching teacup here. Oh look! It's oh okay. Cute little cup. Yeah. See, okay. I have matching plates. Have the set. Yes. Yeah, I've got the. I've got the teacups and the creamer, sugar, and the little plates. Oh, cute. Oh, you I know love what the that little sauces. Oh, I love those. And then I have, I took out some, some silver. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and I think this is for tea, right? It's got holes that in it. It's used for tea. Yes, for that, tea that's back? for tea. Okay. And then and this. Absent. That's this for fish. Like that. That's a fish knife. Oh, it's not. It's not sharp. It's just for. My mother-in-law always said it was for butter. No, nope, butter. that's a fish fillet knife. All right. Well, I'm going to use it. They are very good for butter. We do use them for that. She's not wrong. But that is an not, actual fish fillet knife. Really? Because I have yeah. several of these. And, oh, really? And not, yeah, I have a bunch of. Them. But they're not sharp. They're just like a no. Knife. They're not. They're basically when you have cooked fish is to just kind of peel away the fish meat from the the skeleton, oh, you know, from the bones. So already cooked. Just like yeah, okay. yeah. You call it a butter knife. Yeah. And I just brought this out because I like it. It's just like this little fork. I oh, think for pickles. That's a something. cocktail fork. I like the poke, like what? That's like for maraschino like cherries or for olives. That's a cocktail okay. fork. I've got a um, bunch of things I don't know. I'll, I'll have to break. I'll have to break up the whole set sometime. That's like old timey English bar stuff. That's stuff that I yeah. grew up with in the seventies. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the stuff I got from her seventies. So, should we do this? Oh my god, I'm Let's so scared. Do this. <laughs> All right. I'm already joking. <laughs> All right. I did. I haven't opened it and I haven't smelled it yet. So Ooh. I have some. I have some toast, a little cold, but I just got some white toast. Oh, okay. All right. With so your butter knife. It. Yeah, with my butter. I put well, butter. I already you put can butter on use it. it Cuz oh. the label is hardly visible and like there's hardly any left. Oh. I use wow. this a lot. Yeah. Still. Okay. Oh okay, god, so it I smells it. awful. I'm not going <laughs> to smell, smell it. it. <laughs> 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 not give it a whiff give it a whiff i'm scared i'm scared it All does right. have a strong smell because i was gonna just put it on and like hold my nose and bite it <laughs> that's a good way to do it okay ready oh i'm gonna smell it oh. all right all right what does it smell like it smells like Imagine know. beer. Imagine beer. If okay. you can smell maybe a background in there somewhere. Yeah. It smells like a cross between molasses, fish, mold, and cinnamon. Mold. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Belly button jam, toe jam, eye crusties, and um, no, um, so the reason why I say the beer thing, I had to go get another jar. Yes, so creepy bee. It's Marmite. Way. Yes, it's yeah. Marmite. I've never tried it. <laughs> so basically, mm. it's a very European thing. A German guy came up with this, of course, because the Germans and the Brits and the Belgians, we consume beer. I mean, yeah. when I first came to America and saw people drinking water, I'm like, oh, you drink that? Is that for drinking? I didn't know that. Uh, because over there we just drink tea and beer. So <laughs> this German guy in the late 1800s figured that it's a beer byproduct. When you're making beer right. from yeast and all the, it's the gunk. 
that ends up at the bottom of the tank. Okay, so it's the dredge. So it's the leftover yeast. It's all the dead yeast and stuff, but it is full of B vitamins. And I said, vitamins. Oh, my God. It's taken me 34 <laughs> years. I've always said vitamins. Okay, so it's full of B vitamins. Well, you know, you know one of those vitamins, because I did look it up, is niacin. <laughs> It was just B3, but it doesn't exactly. look like that's going to kill you. Not that much. If it no, well, you can't eat enough of it to get that nice and kick on foot. Cause if right. you do, you're going to be hating life. Seriously. So no talk, Tony. The, uh, I love beer. All right. Yes. Who doesn't? Well, I, people don't. so basically this is the leftover gunk from making beer. Um, okay. And then in the early 1900s, like in 1902, they opened the first factory in England and they started making it because, of course, everyone's making beer over there. So they, they started their own factory uh, making this stuff. It's very salty. Okay. I like so, salt. And the thing is, because it's so strong, such, it has such a strong taste, you can't eat a lot of it. You need a very, a very, bit. very thin, okay, thin. Ready? Right. Do it. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of thick. It is sort of almost it's like molasses. very thick. It's like a fish paste kind of. <laughs> it's like molasses, isn't it? Yeah, I don't really like fish, but I do use fish sauce in Thai food, though, just a little. Oh, okay. See, yeah, yeah, but I don't drink it. Okay, then so I got like, might, that much. Can... Yes, very. Oh, that seems like a no. Nah, all right, yeah. Just spread well, it really all evenly thin yeah okay get it real thin across that toasty i wish duncan was here he's skiing i was gonna torture him too oh is he <laughs> yeah, I have toast. It. <laughs> okay so really thin so it's full of folic acid it's full of niacin um thiamine except for i don't know if it's b12 it does because b12 i don't think you can get that way uh so it during world war one there used to be a lot of berry, berry, and anemia. Ooh, yeah, that looks a bit thick, but all right. Yeah, I'm trying to scrape it up. <laughs> yeah, scrape it as, as light as you can get it, Marilyn. So during the war, Coming apart. Um, they used to hand this out right. to the boys, you know, in the battle, and uh, they wouldn't get anemia and berry, berry. World really? War II, same thing. My mom and her brothers and sisters, my aunts and uncles, grew up during the war. So this was wartime food. All right, give it a go. Okay, ready? Wait, you're not going to have any? Oh, you're going to? Okay. <laughs> I, I love it. I don't know if I'd really taste that. All right, I'm actually going to have more. Yeah, see, I'm I'm just full on dipping. It tastes a little bit like a like a bullion cube. Exactly. Exactly. So, when I was little in England cuz it's really cold, in the mornings on before school, on the way to school, mm -hmm. my mom would um put like half a teaspoon of this in the mug. And hot water from the kettle, boiled from the kettle, okay. and make a hot drink. This is fantastic what? as a hot drink. Yes. In winter. Marmite tea? <laughs> yes. Okay. Another thing. Right, because the company the that makes Bovril, which is an actual bullion. It's like this stuff, but it's beef. Made out of beef. It's a beef extract. It's a bullion cube. That's what we use to make gravies and stuff in England. Mm -hmm. They're the same company that makes this stuff. And um, the same thing, we used to do bovril. Uh, we'd take a bullion cube in a yeah. mug, hot water, and drink that in winter. Um, it's like a little soup. But it's really not that bad, guys. I mean, I don't make a habit of smearing bullion cubes on my toast. But, <laughs> I mean, I would put it in stews. Now, I mean, another thing. I don't eat a lot of red meat. I've eaten a lot of ground turkey. When I make tacos or whatever, you know, spaghetti, I yep. make it all with yep. um, ground turkey. Well, you mm -hmm. know, ground turkey is a little flavorless. you yep. got to really add flavor to it. Put in a half a teaspoon of this in your meat, in your stocks, in your soups. Um, 
I do that with with ground turkey. I put um better than bullion because it's like a paste instead of That's like tough. a yeah. hard bullion cube. But this Useless. is what it reminds me of. All right, I'm gonna be brave, guys. I'm actually gonna taste like you did. Yeah, get I'm a big full. yeah, because it's not. It's quite. I I like it. I'm I've grown up with it. What do uh, what? that's that's like a lot. It is. It's like it a bullion, like, really. Bullion. That's what it tastes <laughs> like, guys. What is it? The growing up spread you never grow out of. That's what we call it. That's what they say it is over there. Um, yeah, and it's no, just seriously, beef bullion on your toast. Okay. It's it. Also, it's vegan and vegetarian. It hasn't gone anywhere near an animal. Okay. It's not gluten free because I know I went through a gluten free. I'm kind of I try and eat less gluten vegan as possible. Spread. Um. It's not gluten-free because it's made with wheat, but it is okay. vegan and it is vegetarian. So if you need to add a little thing to your food, um, this, I'm not kidding. And I'm not getting paid by them. Trust me, I'm not. But I love this stuff. I tell you guys, I kind of think it has a bad rap because it it really tastes like beef bullion. And yeah. I mean, like I said, I probably wouldn't smear it on toast, but I would definitely put it in soups and stews or things that you want to have like a rich, like layer of flair flavor like a depth of flavor um it tastes like beef bullion to me it really does now i gotta say it gotta smells say awful it smells but it tastes pretty good <laughs> it smells like feet but um <laughs> it is it's high in glutamate which is msg now people are over here go nuts Ooh. over here. Oh, MSG, it makes you crazy no it yeah. doesn't it's just a neurotransmitter that makes you taste things so I read this actually blew me away. So Marmite, it, uh, it gives you the umami. It imparts an umami yes. flavor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding it, me? Who's calling me now? No. Piss off. Um, umami, off. which is. <laughs> We're learning lots of lots of great manners today. Because it's, yes, you know, yes. with Cheryl on the loose with her etiquette. Piss oh, this off. is all etiquette. All etiquette. Piss off. <laughs> so umami is the five basic tastes. So MSG doesn't make you crazy and it doesn't do anything weird to you. We I've grown up on this stuff. Oh wait. Not as bad as people think. <laughs> Never mind. Um <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh it it is just it's very flavorful, and that's why I've always added it to food when I cook food. Now, All once right. you're done with it, the little jars, you yeah. keep your buttons in them. All right. Okay. Because they're so cute. I, I keep, keep things in them. I've got bloody Marmite jars everywhere. That's great. Yeah, it's a really cute jar. It really is. Now, we've well, all heard. Maybe I'm going to need a case of these. I don't know. <laughs> See, I would because I do use it regularly. I, I still, I do. I do. Even for my dad, you know, he's old and he needs some vitamins. So I make sure I get it in there in his food. Right. Um, it's It's good. It's good stuff. Now, and everyone's like, oh. gobsmacked. 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 I'm always gobsmacked. 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 Yeah, a lot of people say it's like Vegemite. Yeah, have no. you had Vegemite? Yes, and Vegemite is disgusting. <laughs> I heard that it's basically Marmite, but they add carrots or something to it. They add vegetables. They add um, celery. It's like a ground up celery. Oh. So it is. It's basically this because there are a load of alkies in Australia too. They're all beer drinkers. So of course, what are you going to do with the leftover stuff? Let's make something out of it and sell it to people. But they put um, it's like a mushed up celery in there, so it has a different bit of a color. It looks more green. I don't know. It has like this earth look to it. <laughs> this is just black. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this it's stuff perfect. is like greenish, it, and then it's, it's sort of it's sort of purpley. Like it almost looks like a current jam, like a really dark. Uh, yeah, what's that called? Blackberry jam or something? But it doesn't taste like it at all. Yeah, no, no, it's just awfully, awfully, awfully salty. But it is the good stuff. It's and so I'm sorry, I've turned on so many Americans to my. my I don't know. I might be a believer. Like, I might be a believer. I'm like vegan friend because their food is tasteless. So I'm like, here, have some Marmite. <laughs> and it's full of vitamins too. 
So, you know, they should be paying me at this point in my life because I well, actually... I have vegetarian friends like Kelly. If she ever gets her butt over here to visit me, then I can because I love soup. I have soup almost every day. And uh, I I could put some of this in it. Too. Is that a fibromyalgia thing? I don't know. I love soup. I love soup. I, yep. that's what, I that's why I use, use I, and I use this to make my own broth. You know, when I don't want to just use the same thing all the time, I yeah. use that to make, I'm always eating soup every day. Every now, day. how do you store this in the refrigerator? In the no, don't or? refrigerate it in okay. a dark spot. Just put it in a dark spot. This, uh -huh. this thing will never go bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. It's already fermented. Uh, there could be a, a nuclear apocalypse and they'll find this and they'll find the vaults with LRH's crap in oh. it. Here we go. Helicopter. Here she is. Marmite and a baked potato with cheese. Oh. Totally slaps. Yes. Yes. Okay. She's right. It that. slaps in a baked I potato. Could see that. Eating my hair now. No, it, <laughs> I've got Marmite in my hair, I think. Um, yes. Marmite in a yeah, baked potato. Yeah, Marmite is good for everything. It makes your hair shiny. You put it in your <laughs> hair. It'll cure, cure cancer. It does everything. It does everything. No, it really does. Just kidding, just kidding, guys. It's, you know. And it will plug a hole in the wall. <laughs> What's hair on your chest? Keeps your car going if you run out of gasoline. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't yeah, need oil. No, yeah, I do love me, Mama. It is good stuff. Now, oh yeah. So, oh, next thing is twiglets. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, I didn't know they had marmite in them. Mm. I'm definitely oh, gonna girl. need something sweet. I'm gonna need something no. sweet after this because yeah, yeah, we'll do the puds at the end. Okay. The puds, okay. <laughs> and then I want to ask you. I want to ask you some questions. I want to do like a bit of a proper interview. You know, just ask oh, you. Yeah, questions. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll That's do okay, that. We'll let's do, do that the fun there. stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. So twiglets. Basically, it's a pretzel that has nightmares. And it's covered in marmite. Look at it. it they're, they're a little bit deformed. I mean, they're a little little funky looking. They right. look a little bit like pretzels, but it looks like somebody was drunk when they made them. Yes, basically. If they were yeah. made by a drunk bipolar person and they had nightmares, basically. That's what a twiglet yes. is. But okay. they're so bloody good. So oh this is what I grew up on. And oh, this is I'm afraid of <laughs> no, do I smell? No, they oh, don't I guess smell as bad. They okay. smell, yeah. No, they don't smell like. No. Do they? What do they smell like? They smell like. I'm like just used to the awfulness of it all. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just have no words. See, <laughs> it kind of. It's not okay. a pretzel. But it's a baked. See, these are baked, oven baked, not fried, because they're healthy for you. <laughs> okay. But basically, it looks like, like as if if a pretzel were a bit, you know, needed medication. Now, as you can tell, they're not covered completely in marmite. They're splattered. <laughs> Once again, you don't want too much marmite on there. Okay, I gotta inspect this because. Okay. Oh my god, yeah, they're so good. I can't see. Mm, they're so crunchy. Oh, they're very tangy. Yeah. Oh my god, they're so good. Mmm. I like the extra baked ones with a little burn in, like that one. Oh, like it's got a. Oh. Do you like them? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. These are I'm really almost, an acquired taste. I'm really I noticing think, that right yeah, now. Yeah, I think I like the toast a little better. All right, let's do another one. <laughs> this one's got extra bubbles on it. It's got like mm. it's got like boobies. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm not saying what that one looks like. <laughs> it looks like a Rodney. It, okay. It kind of tastes like a cheese it over here, but sort of without the cheese, but a little bit with the cheese, but a different weird cheese. <laughs> yes. It does taste a little bit like a cheese it. Have you had cheese it's? Yes. Oh yes. It tastes like cheese it, guys. It is. So, uh, See, it's given that it's given me that umami cheesy, yeah. Flavor thing. I could get used to that. 
I mean, no, I really, love, yeah, it would, I love would have chips, up teeth. though. I really can't resist like chip, like yeah. Well, once I'm again, a savory. Good for you. They are baked, not fried. <laughs> They're okay. full of vitamins and gluten. Full of vitamins. Eighty percent whole grain. I wonder what the other twenty percent oh. is. Bloody hell! What does that mean? They have they have almost three three grams of fiber. That's really good for yes for a pretzel or whatever this See, is. We're very healthy about our snacks. We uh, except for the penguins. Um, <laughs> Yes, bowel movements okay. are a thing. Zingy taste and crunch. I don't know. They just taste very zingy to me today. Um, you can buy these if you live in, in civilization. You can probably buy them at an international foods, right? I had to order them, but they came in like two days. I, I know that was it. really quick. You got them really, really, the holler. really quick. Yeah. Okay, I can I it. ask you, what is a holler? Okay, so technically the holler is in... um. The apple, like say Appalachia, which is like Tennessee, Kentucky. There's like that, right. you know, kind of nook where, you know, like deliverance, you know, that movie, like where people are just very like, you know, nestled in the holler. Well, I also live in the Appalachians, but North, Northern Appalachians, but I'm in a, what they call a hollow. It's hollowed out. I have, I have the, the Hoosick mountains uh, in front of my house and the green mountains, which is Vermont behind my house. Hoosick Mountains are, Hoosick Mountain Range, it's pretty small. Anybody from like Colorado or somewhere would just say these are hills. These are just little hills. But right. I wouldn't want to hike them. That's pretty, that's a lot, a lot of energy. So I live basically, Kelly's seen it because I've, I've showed her on FaceTime a bunch of times. My house is on a secondary highway and there's literally like, it drops into a creek and there's a big hill behind my house and a big hill in front of my house and it's in the oh, holler. that sounds lovely. Yeah, it's just hidden there. Okay, yep. so it's a hollow. A hollow, yeah. Stay in the hollow. Like a valley. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's and a I, holler? Because I tell you, the holler, if I, if I sit on my porch and I yell to Duncan, like, hi, dinner's ready. It sounds like my voice is like echoing off the holler. And oh. like when my dogs are in the backyard, and they're yark, they're they're, bar they're yarky, they're barking, and I'm in the front of the house. It sounds like they're coming from the hill, like the opposite direction. See, that's what I thought it had to do with someone yelling. <laughs> kind of is, yeah. Did I lose my thing? Yeah, I did. Yeah, no, okay, that's what I thought it had to do with. Okay, but still, it's like a valley. Yeah, it's like a like kind of a podunk redneck way of saying hollow. Okay, all right, all right. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. Welcome. Okay. I'll get it now. Uh, I just right. want to pop a few things up. Amy, uh, Amy M, I love soup. I'm Jewish, and my late grandmother made the best Jewish penicillin. My mom's Jewish. My mom's side is Jewish. Oh my God. My my chicken soup, my matzo ball soup. Mm. Penicillin, that's like uh, medicine too. What's with oh. the digestives and the penicillin here? <laughs> well, because in, in Europe and um, other places that are in America, our food is nourishment and it's for healing. It's not just to shove up down our gullets. <laughs> yeah. The, for, the Americans if you're live. Sick, yeah. I, I, no doctor here has ever told me when I go in when I've gotten sick, oh, you need to stop eating this and eat more of this or cut this out. And never, ever. Even the gastroenterologist never told me to change my diet. In Spain and in Europe and England, anytime I went to the doctor, as soon as you have a problem, they want you to switch your diet. They want you to eat more fiber. They want you to, you know, they they tell you what you can and can't do. Like, it's better for yeah. you. What are you doing? <laughs> so, um, yes. Our I don't know. We, there is a lot of us live to medicine. eat. <laughs> we live to eat over here. <laughs> yeah, over here is just <sighs> advertisements of food. I couldn't believe it. Every ad on TV was about food. <coughs> like, yeah. God, no wonder everyone over here is five hundred pounds. Yeah, and when you spit, I, I own it. Uh, when you when you live in a cult for sixteen years and can't eat much at all, I like my food. <laughs> I like well, food. rice and yeah. beans, yeah. Well, I didn't do rice and beans, but it was like this um, these really hard biscuits. <laughs> it always comes and back to a biscuit, them, Marilyn. They burn the biscuits and. Um, you know how much I love soup, right? You're fasting yes. for like days and then 
they serve you this burnt corn chowder that's like got this like burnt crust on the bottom of the Dutch oven and so so you're eating these hard biscuits and burnt corn chowder and I'm like yeah oh. so sad oh. I was so sad after not oh, eating that's awful <laughs> I'm so sorry yeah god thank that's you. dreadful thank you, thank you. That was the worst thing that ever happened to me. I didn't know you had food deprivation too. Yeah. It was very much like the Sea Org. I don't think they I don't think Marlene Sweeney ever heard of Scientology, but yeah. But she it's funny was how like they, in step, she was right in step handbook. with Ella Rose and She had the handbook. I don't know yeah. how they get it, but we do. Yeah. So would you like to do a, a Zenu Marlene with our tea? We yes. Do that. Absolutely. Right, everybody. We've got we've got a, a Zenu emoji, we got dung heap, and we've got an actual Marlene. So let's do that. I gotta find it now. Ah, sorry. Oh, here it is. Zenu Marlene, everybody partake. Zenu Marlene. Cheers. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is so much fun. So we took we did all the salty stuff. Now let's get so down to some good stuff. Okay. All right. All right. Now, dessert. I wasn't able, I used to be able to find the big cans of Heinz spotted dick where it said in big spotted dick. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what, when they used to serve us this at school when That's I was a kid. Said. Said. Okay. It really yeah. is a thing. Look, spotted dick hoods, steam, steam hoods. hoods. <laughs> why do i why do i always sound like uh what's her name julia julia child like and, and then we talked you do <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were a bit swedish chef with the puds i'm like i just thought that would, when you were trying to say it the other day i was dying i fell off my bed and laughing <laughs> now Team in puds. england okay um and we eat a lot of steamed game. puddings for dessert oh god doesn't that look good it does oh, smell good. good. So it's we have a lot of steamed puddings, which basically is a little cake. Um, they're okay. done kind of like in a little double boiler. My nan used to make them, these steamed puds, right? Yeah, she's a fork for a spoon. Um, really, really good. Now, you're missing something. And I didn't make any, but you're supposed to eat them covered in this. What's that? Is that clotted it's cream? Custard, custard powder. Oh. And this stuff, you mix it with milk and you heat it up and it turns into a thick, uh, like a pudding, a warm pudding. Okay. And then you. I did put this in the microwave. It said 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's cold now, but that's okay. I'm, I'm a now. mom. I'm used to cold food. <laughs> oh, then, then right. <laughs> even though my kids are out of the house, I still eat cold food. So it'll be just cakey to you right now. But when you okay. cover it, you just cover it in warm custard. Now it's oh. like it's it's swimming in this lovely sweet sea of happiness and joy. It's just nothing but happiness and joy in your mouth. All right. So this is the only kind of dick I like. To... <laughs> Sorry. The spotted kind. <laughs> Didn't mean to get there. But yeah, especially if they're spotted. Spotted. <laughs> you don't want to spot on you. I spot a spotted dick. <laughs> oh, oh, and then yeah, because you were reading off the ingredients, right? And you go, what's a sultana? Yeah. Right. So in America, you all have raisins and they're dark little things. In mm -hmm. over there, for some reason, we have sultanas and they're either light green or orange. They're the light grapes turned into raisins oh, you guys only like, have dark grapes what what well, with that we call, no we call them golden raisins there's a golden uh, color you ever have a golden really? raisin i've never seen them here i've only seen raisins really golden raisins all right well she they are golden and they are raisins she doesn't like but raisin that's what a sultana is raisins are gross yeah they're yeah they're like little they're like hamster poops Ooh, someone said Coop. Clooty. Oh, Clooty dumpling. Clooty. Clooty dumplings. Clooty. Well, it's Clooty. Scottish. So yeah, Clooty. it's Clooty. You got to say it with Clooty. That's Clooty. Scottish. Clooty I don't dumplings. even know how to make that. But any 
British dessert usually is covered in custard. Every okay. dessert in school was a piece of cake or but, spotted dick or steam pudding covered in custard. Now, to, to me, pudding is is like a custard. Right. To us, it's Over a here. cake. This okay. is a pudding. Whoa. So it's really a cake. It's not a pudding. Because okay. what you guys call pudding, we call blancmange right. or mousse, the French words. We use blancmange. Because I wasn't sure if it would be a spoon or a fork. Because I was like, am I eating pudding or am I eating a cake? Oh, so, right. It well, with. Etiquette, it would be a spoon. If you're do, using proper etiquette, yeah. If it's in a bowl with custard, it would be a spoon. If it's a cake on a plate, it would be a fork. Oh, this is cake. Is this cake on a plate? Well, today it would be cake on a plate for you. So, yeah. Because I, I don't have the fork. custard. Have a go. Okay, ready? Okay. Oh, that's a big. All right. I have a big mouth. I'm just going to go for it. Wait. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste like? Mm. It tastes. It tastes just like carrot cake, like right? spice. It tastes like spiced cake, like carrot cake. Well, that's basically what a steamed pudding is. It's a soft, warm, spongy cake. Yeah, basically, yeah, that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Now, the best one though is when you go to uh, there's this these pubs in England. It's a chain of pubs called Weatherspoons. <laughs> And on Thursday night, they do a really good curry. And for dessert, it comes with a pudding. It's a sticky toffee pudding. Kelly, Ooh, please tell Marilyn good. right now about how good sticky toffee. This is, I see, I didn't find it. I should have put, next sticky time we got to try sticky pudding. toffee pudding. Because that one, I want you that. are going to love. I love she's never sticky. had it. She's never had it. Child, you're, oh, this cricket says, Bitter and Blanc is lovely. What's that? Kelly, you've not had Weatherspoon's <laughs> sticky toffee pudding? <gasps> I'll order My it. Girls. <laughs> My girls! <laughs> no, really, it's the bomb diggity. It really is good stuff. Oh, sticky toffee pudding is... I'm glad I... Cassie I'm since birth, there. sticky toffee pudding is oh, life. It is. It's absolute mm -hmm. divinity. And once again, it's a little steam pudding, but it's covered in this syrupy, sweet stuff. She said, I grew up in a cult. I didn't try an omelet until I was 17. Oh. I can make omelets. They don't make omelets. In cults? No, you're right. My dad doesn't eat omelets. <laughs> I've never seen him eat an omelet. Oh God, that's I'm sorry, Kel. All no. right, no, we got to do that. We got to do that. We got to get you some sticky toffee pudding. Oh my God, I've been in America for 34 years and I've had it. Yeah, oh, no. is that like we have sticky buns over here? My sister makes them. They're just like oh, so good. It's like covered in like this caramel. It's like a bun, like a sweet bun. Not a lot of flavor, just but and then it's just. Just glazed in this like yes, it's like this sticky caramel. Yes. Oh, I love caramel. It's like that. It's like that. Oh my god, it's so good. So freaking awesome. So good. So good. Hi, FXP. Good to see you. We've got 220 people in here, Cheryl. Oh, we do. <laughs> I hope you're all considering trying some marmite. It's, it's good not that for bad. You. It really isn't bad. It'll keep the anemia and the berry berry away. Whatever berry really berry good, guys. <laughs> I mean, it's a little odd, but it does taste a little bit like the popcorn I bought last week. It had, I said it was cheesy popcorn. I didn't realize it was vegan cheese. It wasn't cheese. I said cheesy with an I-E. Right. And it turned out it was nutritional yeast, but it actually tasted like cheese. It was good. Well, uh, uh, vegans and vegetarians do use nutritional yeast to um, enhance their food, don't they? You don't yes, hate it. You love it. <laughs> exactly. You See, you either it, hate you it or it. you love it. And, you don't and hate it. You love it. I, I, I love it. I really don't. 
it's good on everything. All right. I, I don't really like the aftertaste, though. I'm going to have to have some more spotted tick. <laughs> Top it off with spotted tick. Oh, no, it's good stuff. Try this. It's good stuff. Um, mm. And then, well, there's only one other thing us Brits eat a lot. Oh, I left my digesters in the fridge. I forgot to bring those up. Oh, those are the bickies, my bickies. It reminds me of like Alka Seltzer or something like that. The Tums, like, take a digestive plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> oh, it does sound awful, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, Cheryl's it lap is bloody brilliant. It is. This is so much fun. <laughs> baked beans. I like baked beans. This is another thing that I grew up on over there that's. Uh, skinheads on a raft, otherwise known as beans on toast. A toast? Really? Yeah. So basically you get your bit of toast and if you're fancy, you put a little Marmite on it and then what, you put your beans on top and that's dinner. <laughs> okay. We do eat a lot of beans. Well, now, our baked beans do don't do. have I make, bits in them. I make, I make baked beans in, in the Dutch oven. Because I'm actually originally from near Boston. Like anything oh. anything east of Worcester in Massachusetts is Boston. So I'm from Haverhill. But uh, originally. But yeah, I love. There was this restaurant. I never actually went to the restaurant. But I had the, the recipe from this old lady that loved to go there. It, it was Durgan Park. And it just closed. After like 200 and something years, it just closed. But I got the recipe. And it's that. Uh, it just. You just. Uh, very slowly bake the beans all day. And I've done it with with uh, salt pork. I've done it without. But I bet the Marmite would give it a good flavor. It, it has know, that, adds a little kick. It's got that. And it has that molasses kind of texture, too. Right, I right. Put, I put lots of molasses in my baked beans. Oof, oof. Yeah, yummy. Love that stuff. Durgan Love Park, that. yes. I know. Can you believe it closed a few years ago? It was like one of the first restaurants. Like it's been, it, I don't, I don't know how old it was, but it was there forever, forever. Oh, See, I'm wow. already, I'm already, I'm talking like I did in Boston, forever, <laughs> forever. Shame it closed. I know. Oh, we got a. Have some running emojis, Raymond and Jezebel. Yes. Yeah, the Heinz vegetarian baked beans are all are very close, very similar to the British baked beans. When they're mm. out of the Heinz British ones, I buy the the those Heinz vegetarian ones. I've been living on those. Yeah, I put bourbon in my baked beans. You know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the deep, the the darker molasses ones. Um, I've had some canned baked beans that are like ketchup tasting. Yeah, very well, that's basically what our beans are. It's just beans with ketchup. <laughs> that's what they are, basically. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and somehow I made it through life growing up on that stuff. I don't know how, but I did. You just, you just, you just put everything on toast, right? Just everything, yeah. every cheese yeah. toast. Yeah, a Welsh rare bit is cheese on toast. But I've we make that. fancy names for them. <laughs> uh, Skinheads on a rub. <laughs> <laughs> a Welsh rare bit. A Welsh rabbit. Don't ask me why. <laughs> that's just cheese on toast. Anything can go on toast. That's right. Anything. Put it on toast. Poached egg on toast, fried egg on toast, scrambled egg on toast. Mm -hmm. Toast is the foundation. All right. We learned a lot today. We really have. Yes. <laughs> this is so much fun. We got to do this more often. We'll have to do right. a, a three way with, with Kelly sometime. Like, have have uh, all the things, all the definitely. Because I want to invite Kelly over when, when I have this place to myself. I think Kelly should come over here to Clearwater and we should uh, go do some squirreling around. Yeah. Do some with our just... puddings and our marmite. Yeah, you guys can like um set up like a little booth in front of the flag thing. Would you like a taste of this my toast? It's very good. <laughs> free therapy and free tastings. I'll take the <laughs> e-meter. We'll take Marmite and toast in the e-meter and we can set up and give everyone yeah. free therapy. <laughs> give them the clear cognition. <laughs> 
Well, even though most oh of them goodness. know that by the time they come to Clearwater, because they're the upper level, so they already have that under their hat. But I did want to ask a real quick question, though, of everyone. Might be sooner yeah. than you think. Uh oh, she's gonna she's gonna descend on you. It sounds like. Oh, good. Oh, really? All right. When I've got this place to myself, you have to come over and we have to uh, do a twinning around Tampa <laughs> or something. You know how confident Chris does the mini, um, mini streets? I was thinking I should start <laughs> my own <laughs> little series. Here's John yeah. Atac. <laughs> Here's my Grinda. Oh. <laughs> start my own little series. <laughs> oh my goodness. Would you think anyone? Would you be up for that? Because that, uh, that I've got mine. I've got my body fainting. Whoop. Sorry. Well, okay. I've got my mini Marilyn here. And see, you've got a golden crochet. Oh, my hair's a mess. Yes, I did. You did send me one. I think. Uh huh. So that's She's your naked. Marilyn. I've got my Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's a hot mess, like me. <laughs> and then, that's of course, awesome. I got Kelly. Kelly today. Ah. Can't really see it. Why is she being? Why is it not working? Maybe Stop light. There you go. I can see it now. It's a little bit far away, but yeah. That's so cute. She's so cute. I love it. It's falling everywhere. Uh, but yeah, I thought I'll start my own little series. My own little First set, series. Marmite is the real pure. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It just but you don't everything. have to sit there for five hours a day. You just Helps have a piece go of clear. Toast. Yeah. Marmite is life. It's like how oh, you go clear. Marmite it helps you go everything. clear. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> it clears out your system. It clears something out. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. oh, see, and Dustin says he'll film it. He'll join me and Kelly and he'll film it. Oh, good, good. See, we're right. already getting the crew going. <laughs> that would be great. Okay. So, wait, you have a quiz here. Where is it? Uh, 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 is it this? Emily said, comment, Cheryl, complete this phrase. If you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join our club <laughs> or cult. <laughs> cold yeah no those are other biscuits oh my god they're so good they're kind of like a penguin but they're not they have different flavors it's once again a biscuit covered in chocolate because everything's covered in chocolate um mm -hmm. oh and they're so good yes or custard or a cheese sauce or custard on toast <laughs> on toast always and it has a fancy name. Or a stick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is thicker chocolate. You're right, Kim. Um, club is thicker chocolate. The the penguin has just dipped in a thin layer of chocolate. A club sandwich is more of a thicker chocolate. Oh, orange clubs. So oh, yeah. over here, a club sandwich is this giant thing with like white bread, like I have, right? Like three layers, and it's got like turkey and cheese and just tons of like stuff in it like it's so big you can't even like bite it that's what right it diabetes is. on bread <laughs> <laughs> Lots of mayonnaise. yeah usually yeah everything all the things yeah. just piled up a club sandwich to us is a petite little biscuit covered oh, in cookie. chocolate it's a cookie <laughs> covered in chocolate wow Oh, a Biscuit hobnob. Cold. Hobnobs got real famous after I left England. I don't know. We never used to eat hobnobs. What happened? Hobnobs Hob are the thing now. I've never heard of hobnobs. <laughs> I do sound like Julia Child. You really do. Like. <laughs> well, you know what? When I when I left the cult, one of the very first things I started watching, besides when I would like very sneakily watch, you know, we watch the Rocky films and all that, but. I got Netflix, and that was when you used to call, you used to uh, get order the CDs. The actual, yeah, the DVDs. Yeah. So one of the first things I did was I ordered on DVD all of the French Chef um, episodes. So I used to watch like her, and I was like, I learned how to how to make you know French onion soup and just and everything had alcohol in it. I learned how to make a proper omelet. Yeah, I learned all all the things. 
So, and so that's, maybe that's why I speak like her all the time. <laughs> like a little oh. bit of this and a little bit of that. You do. You sound just <laughs> like her. It's so funny. And I do love uh, to cook. I love to cook. Well, I was oh, married wow. to uh, a sous chef. He worked at the Cheesecake Factory. He worked at Disneyland for a while. So I, I ate very well there for a bit. Do I like haggis? Oh, I, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> what is that exactly? It's so, no, 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 no. Okay, no, so you're not going to no. make me try that. Okay, good. No, no, no. Okay. If I was sitting with you in a restaurant and someone put that on your plate, I would bat it to the floor. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't let you eat it. Um, and I come from Scottish stock. I can't do it. Okay, so basically... It's the intestine of a sheep, and in it is ground up meat and brains and belly buttons, eyelids, toner. I don't know. It's all parts of the sheep. I think there's liver, and I don't know. There's all kinds of bits and bobs, and they shove it in this intestine, and they steam no. it, they cook it. And no. Oh. No. No. Just no. 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 I agree. No. No, when I was in Scotland, <laughs> everyone like, no, hey, you should try it. And I'm like, do you not see the look on my face? No, I'm never going to. No, you really should. It's good. I'm like, that's no. enough to make me become a vegetarian. Just even thinking about that. Seriously. This is why I did because of some of the stuff I grew up eating. It was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> um, but yeah, haggis, I've never even tried it. And I mean, just even the sound of it. Couldn't they make it sound better? And my dad thinks, he believes, he is the reincarnation of Robert Burns, the Scottish poet, who okay. they do the dinners and the address to a haggis every year. There's a, a He wrote a poem to the haggis, because it's a very important cultural food in Scotland. Mm -hmm. So your dad is the reincarnation so, of the guy who... Yes, he believes who he's Robert poems. Burns. Okay, who wrote, wrote poetry about haggis. Yes. He was a Scottish poet who died of syphilis. <laughs> My dad believes in, in his auditing, going back on his track, Okay, he is Robert Burns. And every year in January, I forget the date, when it's Robert Burns' birthday and everyone has the special Burns dinner, he cries because the whole world is addressing him. The narcissism that yeah. Scientology produces is unmatched <laughs> by mm. anything else in the galaxy. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I, I would love to, I would like to have you back and talk about. Yes. Let, yeah. Let's do it. I know mind. today was, today was levity and fun and yeah. important <laughs> things. We always put, we always put some levity in everything, right? A spoonful Absolutely. of sugar. <laughs> because it, this past weekend was a bit heavy. I'm still quite annoyed, as you can tell by, how did they hurt you? Point us on, the, show us on the doll how they hurt you. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I love you, Cheryl. <laughs> hey, you know what? You're not hurting anybody. <laughs> You're just, you know, just using dolls. I mean. All right. Don't know yet. I would love to come back and speak about my Scientology side of things mm -hmm. as Absolutely. a never in, but with a father who yep. was one of the yeah. first on ship mm -hmm. with LRH. Wow. Um, yeah, it's been very interesting and it's just amazing. My whole life, it's something I've had to keep to myself. And now people are actually interested and everyone out there is knows what I know. Mm -hmm. I thought I was the only one in my group of people that knew some of the information like no one wants to know about this anyway and if i try and explain it to them they're gonna think i'm nuts so you are like one of the ogs of the ogs of the never ends <laughs> oh yeah my dad was on he was on the first boat called the flying scotman with hannah when hannah eltringham was the captain first. oh before the apollo there was another ship and it was a piece of crap too and it was smaller i believe some kind of trawler of some kind 
And they were on that bopping around for a bit. And my dad blew. He didn't like the conditions. Conditions. Uh, married my mom, blah, blah, blah. Got rid of me and my mom. Went on the Apollo. Blew again because he didn't like the smelly room. Remember they were talking about one room with all the bunk beds. And it was really yeah. because it was like 20, 30 people in there. He left. He goes, it was so bad. You couldn't sleep. But from the smell. So oh. he let he actually blew, found his second wife, took her on ship and got married so he could have they could have their own birthing. <laughs> yeah, you hear that a lot. You hear that yeah. a lot. That so they were just they, like, I mean, they, that's what happened in and there was major purity culture where I come from. So it was like, okay, hate you, you know, <laughs> let's do this. Right, the, the Lord, the Lord said, "Yeah, right. the Lord said, uh, you're my kind of like the the caveman thing, just bop her over the head and drag, you know." <laughs> right, and I love how in in religion, women never fare very well. We never get to do very well because we always they always come down on us for the Jezebel vibe that 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 yeah. sexual spirit. It's like I'm just being me. I'm sorry, I'm twelve and I just grew some lumps. I didn't mean to do that, but now I'm being. Well, you keep yeah. doing this and doing that. I'm not doing anything. I'm just walking around the planet. I'm not making anyone else do anything. They're doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was told I made the men stumble. I made the young men stumble. It was like, well, they should just stop being so clumsy. <laughs> right. Or like Alicia, degraded daughters. They did the same thing to her. I think Vanessa, they did. Vanessa LaRose, they did the same thing to her. Um yeah, no, well, we, we don't do very well in religion, control, us women. Yeah, they control with shame and, yeah, very patriarchal. With shame, that's it, control with shame. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's always mm -hmm. our fault. Oh, of course, of course. Well, this is so much fun. I could just sit here and hang out with you all day. I just want to let everybody know that our very own Kelly Copter will be live in about maybe a half an hour. I don't know what yes. the exact time was. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pee and hop on Streamyard for her and help her out. But uh, anytime, let's totally do this again. This is absolutely because so there's yeah. more. <laughs> I would love to do oh, this again, Marilyn. Thank you so much. For having yeah, me on. we'll definitely plan. We'll we'll plan several. That would be awesome. All right, everybody. I'm gonna attempt to do. I forgot to do the outro yesterday, so we are going to try to do this. All right, and bye, everybody. <laughs> Zinu Marlene, everybody partake. Cheers. Mm, this is good coffee. This is why, you know, my hobby makes the coffee.